activated sludge is the most widely used process for treating municipal and industrial wastewater in the United States, with approximately 22,000 treatment plants in use. Activated sludge is the growth of bacteria on the wastewater organics and inorganics. These bacteria biodegrade wastewater organics and convert BOD into biomass. This can be settled and removed from the treated wastewater in the final gravity clarifier. Then it can be removed for disposal as waste activated sludge. Frequent operational problems that affect activated sludge performance are sludge bulking and foaming. These problems are caused by the overgrowth of filamentous organisms in the activated sludge. There are about 20 different filaments that occur in activated sludge that cause bulking problems. There are several that cause foaming problems. The following are the currently recognized filament types in order of their appearance in this video. Spirotilus natans, type 1701, Haliscominobacter hydrosis, Thiothrix 1 and 2, type 021N, Begiotoa, type 0914, Nostacoida limicola 1, 2, and 3, type 0961, type 0092, type 0411, type 1851, type 0675, type 0041, Microthrix parvicella, Nocardia, Fungi. Those with the Latin name have been isolated in pure culture and properly identified. Those with the type designation have not been isolated in pure culture and remain unnamed. There are five known causes of filament growth. Spirotilus natans, type 1701, and Haliscominobacter hydrosis are caused by low dissolved oxygen, or DO, concentration for the applied organic loading. This oxygen stress can occur in the aeration basin or even the final clarifier. Microthix parvicella, nocardia, Haliscominobacter hydrosis, and types 1851, 0675, 0041, and 0803 are caused by low organic loading. These filaments develop at high mixed liquor suspended solids concentration and longer sludge age. Thiothrix 1 and 2, Begiotoa, Nostocoida limicola, and types 021N, 0092, 0914, 0961, and 0411 are caused by septicity, where organic acids and sulfides are high in concentration. These filaments use organic acids and some sulfides as food for growth. Septic conditions can occur in the collection system, the treatment process itself, or the influent wastewater from some industries. Treatment of septage can also cause bulking and foaming by these filaments. Thiothrix 1 and 2, Nostocoida limicola 3, and type 021N also cause bulking at nutrient deficient conditions usually low nitrogen and or phosphorus. This is generally not a concern for domestic wastewater treatment systems. It can be a problem in industrial wastewater systems and municipal systems that accept a significant amount of industrial wastewater. Finally, low aeration basin pH less than 6.5 can cause bulking by fungi. Fungi are the only filaments that can grow at low pH conditions. Foaming is generally caused by either Nocardia or Microthrix parvicella. 
Both filaments have a similar cause that involves three conditions. One, their growth on grease and fat. Two, lower organic loading and longer sludge age. And three, low oxygen or septicity. Filament identification requires observation of a mixed liquor suspended solid or foam sample using a phase contrast microscope capable of magnification to 1000 power. This involves using an oil immersion lens. An ordinary light microscope cannot be used for filament identification. One drop of the mixed liquor suspended solids or foam is placed on a microscope slide, covered with a number one cover glass and gently blotted with tissue to remove excess water. This is then observed at several magnifications to determine the characteristics of the filament present. Also, the Gram and Neisser stains are used to further characterize the filaments. The following is a list of important characteristics used to identify filaments. The filament width, important if greater than or less than one micrometer. The presence of branching and if true or false. The presence of cell cross walls and cell shape. The presence of a sheath. Whether the filament has intracellular sulfur granules the Gram and Neisser staining reaction. The Gram positive is blue, the Gram negative is red, while the Neisser positive is purple and the Neisser negative is brown. We have discussed the causes of filament growth and the conditions at which these filaments are present. Now, let's go under the microscope and look at each of these filaments individually. The next group of filaments are termed low DO filaments. Spirotilus natans causes significant interflock bridging when the filaments fill the space between the flock. It usually has branching, obvious at low magnification. Spirotilus natans has characteristic sausage shaped cells and a distinctive sheath that resembles a clear soda straw-like tube around the filament. This filament has a large diameter, greater than one micrometer. This filament has branching which is false. Here, two filaments have stuck together and there is no direct connection between them. Shown are Gram and Neisser staining. Spirotilus natans is Gram negative and Neisser negative. Type 1701 causes a different type of bulking than spirotilus. Type 1701 grows mostly within the flock and causes an open and diffuse flock structure. It has sausage-shaped cells and a well-defined sheath. Note that this is a thinner filament with a diameter less than one micrometer. Type 1701 is Gram negative and Neisser negative. Haliscominobacter hydrosis occurs within the flock and due to its small size is often overlooked at low magnification. This filament is more obvious at a higher magnification, shown here at 400 power. Haliscominobacter hydrosis is straight, without cell walls and with no cell shape. It also has a sheath. It appears as pins in a pincushion. The sheath is only seen when cells are missing, shown here. The filament is gram-negative and Neisser-negative. Thiothrix cause significant interflock bridging shown here at 100 power. There are two thiothrix species present here, the thinner type 2 and the thicker type 1. It has a distinctive structure called a rosette. Here, filaments grow out of a common flock, resembling a starfish. This is a key characteristic for identifying thiothrix. Thiothrix may also have sulfur granules within their cells, 
shown here as bright spots in the filaments at 100 power under a dark field illumination. This filament has rectangular shaped cells and a thin sheath, usually not observed. It may also have terminal sausage-shaped cells, termed gonidia, which are reproductive cells. These are gram-negative and Neisser-negative. Type 021N is a large and long filament that causes significant interflock bridging. It is the operator's worst nightmare. Type 021N has barrel-shaped cells with clear indentations at the cell walls and no sheath. It is gram-negative and Neisser-negative. Vegetoa is the only filament that moves, shown here at 100 power, going between the flock. This mobility is the key identification characteristic for Begiatoa. This filament usually has sulfur granules in the cells, shown here. It has rectangular shaped cells, however these cells are usually masked by sulfur. It is gram negative and Neisser negative. Type 0914 causes interflock bridging and may occur free in suspension as dispersed filament growth. Type 0914 appears as thiothrix, but is usually thinner and has square-shaped cells. It is gram-negative and Neisser-negative. There are three nosticoida, designated type 1, thin, type 2, medium-thick, and type 3, very thick. Shown here is Nosticoida limicola 1, the thinnest filament. It has barrel or disc-shaped cells and an irregularly curved shape. Shown here is Nosticoida limicola 2. It has barrel or disc-shaped cells, only it is thicker than type 1. Shown here is Nosticoida limicola 3. It is the thickest of the filaments. In plants treating domestic wastewater, the nosticoida are gram-positive, but in some industrial wastewater systems, they are gram-negative. The most significant feature of the nosticoida is their Neisser-positive reaction. Type 0961 is straight or smoothly curved and causes interflock bridging. Type 0961 has long rectangular shaped cells that appear transparent. Due to this transparent quality, it is often referred to as the cellophane tape filament. It is gram negative and Neisser negative. Type 0092 is a small filament that causes an open flock structure. It is thin with no cell walls and no cell shape. Sometimes biological indicators other than filaments are present. Here we see spirochetes appearing much like corkscrews. These are indicators of septicity along with type 0092. Type 0092 is gram negative but strongly Neisser positive. Type 0411 causes interflock bridging and sometimes dispersed filament growth. Type 0411 also has very long sausage-shaped cells and no sheath. It is gram-negative and Neisser-negative. Shown together are types 1851, 0675, and 0041 all indicators of a low food to microorganism or F2M ratio. These cause both interflock bridging and an open flock structure. Note that there are three types of filaments present, differentiated by diameter, thin, medium, and thick. Type 1851 is the thinnest and has rectangular shaped cells. It has a sheath and usually attached growth, such as a single bacteria on its surface. 
type 0675 is similar to type 1851, but has square-shaped cells and is somewhat thicker. Note the sheath. Type 0041 is the thickest of the three. It has square-shaped cells and a sheath. All three of these filaments are Neisser negative, but gram positive. Microthrix parvicella causes an open flock structure. This filament may also cause foaming. Microthrix parvicella is a thin filament that is irregularly curved, has no cell walls and no cell shape. It is Neisser negative, but strongly gram positive. Nocardia is found mostly within the flock. This filament causes foaming, but not bulking. Nocardia is a short, thin filament with characteristic true branching. This is the only bacterial filament with true branching. This filament is Neisser negative, but strongly gram positive. Fungi are very easy to identify, being very large in diameter, about five to tenfold thicker than the bacterial filaments. Fungi also have true branching, shown here. They can be either gram-negative or gram-positive, but only Neisser-negative. Identification of filaments that grow in activated sludge is a valuable technique to troubleshoot and correct bulking and foaming problems. This identification is based on their Gram and Neisser staining reactions. With some experience, one can become quite good at filament identification, a valuable tool for operating any activated sludge system. For more information on filament identification, consult the following text. Manual on the Causes and Control of Activated Sludge Bulking and Foaming, 2nd Edition, by David Jenkins, Michael Richard, and Glenn Dagger, Lewis Publishers, Boca Raton, Florida, 1993.